And we're joined now by the director of the Center for Science, Sustainability and the Media at the University of Pennsylvania, Professor Michael Mann. He's also the author of The New Climate War. Michael, good to have you here. This is the biggest investment in climate policy in U.S. history, and it comes as wildfires, droughts, floods, extreme heat break out across America. We've been reporting on it, it seems like daily now. Just on Friday, Death Valley saw nearly 70 percent of its annual rainfall in one day causing a rare flood event seen there in the satellite image. And so with that backdrop, how big of an impact will this deal have on the climate crisis? Yeah, thanks, Anna. It's good to be with you. And, um, you know, there's a lot of bad news uh, every day. It seems like there's more bad news about the disastrous impacts that climate change is now having. And we're seeing it play out in, in real time. But here there's a little bit of good news. Um, this is by far the boldest climate legislation we've ever seen. Uh, passed the U.S. Senate, and of course, uh, we expect it to go on to become law. And it doesn't solve the problem. Let's make that clear. Uh, there's still a lot of work that's left to be done. But the provisions in this bill will reduce carbon emissions by about 40 percent by 2030. Um, the target is we'd like to reduce them by 50 percent by 2030 and get them down to zero by mid-century to prevent a warming of the planet that takes us beyond three degrees Fahrenheit, because that's where we really start to see ever more disastrous climate impacts that start to exceed our adaptive capacity. We need to keep the warming of the planet within our capacity to adapt, and this legislation will help us do that. The most important thing about it, of course, it now reestablishes leadership on the part of the United States. And that leadership is essential if we're going to see China and India and other mm -hmm. countries to come together to solve this crisis. I just wonder, when will we feel the effects of this legislation? Like, how quickly will we know whether or not it's working? Yeah, you know, the, the climate system, it's like a locomotive. It's got a lot of, uh, you know, uh, it's got a lot of inertia. So when you slam on the brakes, it doesn't come to a screeching halt. But what we do know is that when we bring those carbon emissions to zero, the warming of the planet actually stabilizes within just a few years. So there is a fairly direct and fairly immediate impact of these changes. Of course, this is just the United States. And where this is really going to have an impact is in spurring other countries to come to the table. And then we get those global reductions in carbon emissions that are necessary if we're to avert catastrophic climate impacts. So just last week, China decided to suspend its cooperation with the U.S. on climate. Can the U.S. make the kind of gains intended by this package without China doing its part? Well, no, we can't. But, um, you know, the, the reality is that this is posturing by China and it has to do with sort of some of the short term geopolitical conflicts that we're dealing with. I think it's fairly clear from China's policies that there is a fundamental commitment in the uh, Glasgow uh, climate summit last year, uh, China has committed to peaking its emissions, to bringing them to zero. And this is what's most important. Under the Obama administration, where the United States was taking a leadership position, we saw China come to the table. They were decommissioning coal-fired power plants. They were going well beyond their commitments. Then we had a, a president in Donald Trump who unilaterally threatened to withdraw from the Paris Agreement. That sent a signal to China that they didn't need to be serious either. Now that we're back, we're back in a leadership position on this issue. You can expect to see China now begin to ratchet up its own commitments. What more should the U.S. do? What do you see as the shortcomings of this bill? Yeah, so, you know, we didn't get everything that uh, climate advocates would like to see. This was probably the best bill that we could get with a 50-50 Senate. Uh, and what that means is that if we want to see, you know, more aggressive climate action, we're going to need to see a larger majority in Congress of you know, climate forward politicians. And right now, it's pretty clear that's just one party. There's one party, the Democratic Party, that is behind climate action. There's another, the Republican Party, that's completely against it. And so we, we want to get those reductions down to, uh, up to 50 percent. 40 percent isn't enough. And this bill still provides some incentives uh, to you know, the expansion of fossil fuel infrastructure, uh, leases to drill oil, pipeline construction. And so if we're really going to get those reductions, those 50 percent reductions by 2030 that we need, we're going to need more aggressive legislation. This is a great start. But, you know, if people who care about the climate turn out in these midterm elections, then we will have the sort of majority that gets us some of those even greater uh, actions.
or, or the shifting in mindset of some of those Republicans who are uh, our leaders in this country. Professor Absolutely. Michael Mann, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. Thank you.